<laughs> All right. So, Leo, you're here to tell us about Wander today. So you're looking for more contributors. You are, are you participating in Hacktoberfest? Yeah, I haven't set up the repo yet to do so, but right after this, I'm going to take the step necessary. So for sure. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Cool. So do you want to tell us a little bit about what it is and maybe what the stack is and all that good stuff? Yeah, I'm really excited about this project. Uh, it's called Wander. Uh, it pairs with HashCorp Nomad which is a sort of Kubernetes alternative container orchestrator. Really great. I love HashCorp products. Their team is awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it sort of gives you, there's a really cool tool called Canines for Kubernetes. And there's a pretty similar one called Daemon for Nomad. And it's sort of a terminal application that allows you to browse and administrate your cluster. Um, Wander is the beginnings of a similar but different tool. Um, it fixes some issues I had with uh, the sort of canines daemon um, interface and also adds some important features I think are, are really useful. Okay. Um, that being said, it's like pretty early development. So uh, there's a minimal feature set that I think is really useful for folks. People are installing it and using it. It's got a solid user base. Um, I think it can get a lot better and I'm excited about that. Um, so I can give like a sort of an overview of where it's at today. Uh, this is all just looking at the readme, ribbon image 61 on Wander on GitHub. Yeah. Um, and you can see jobs. So jobs are sort of like the pod level running thing in a nomad cluster. You can see allocations, which are uh, a subset of pods. So you click through, press enter, and you see allocations for a job. You can see log, standard out, and standard in. Uh, you can exec into a running task and run commands. So drop into a shell and a running task. Mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, cluster level events you can tail, um, filtered to a job or an allocation or globally. Uh, you can use like a JQ. Um, expression to uh, filter the JSON of the events and show it in a way you'd like. Uh, any screen you can save to a local file. So if you see like a job spec or you're in an exec session that you want to save, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, you can see these sort of job and allocation specifications in JSON format, um, all the details, memory, um, CPU, all that, what image is running. Very cool. Um, and of course, it's written with tools from Charm. So it's written in Bubble Tea. Uh, nice. It also uses Wish as an SSH server, optionally. Um, huge Charm fan. <laughs> Love it. That's awesome. So if you were to do explain it like I'm five, so if there, if there are people who are like more entry level, would you say that this is um, like a kind of beginner friendly, that there might be some beginner friendly issues on this or for those people who might need a little bit more um, context around what it does. Do you have like an explain it like I'm five version of what Wander does? Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's a bit tricky. This has actually been my project that's the least exciting to explain to my friends. Uh, so <laughs> be like, oh, I have this open source project. People are using it. They're like, what does it do? And I'm like, well, if you don't, if you're not a programmer or you've never heard of Nomad, it's not as exciting as my other projects. Um, but yeah, the Eli five is like, if you interact with a Nomad cluster in any way, you can view and uh, interact with that cluster. Um, okay. So my company, for instance, runs all our applications and services in Nomad. And it's very helpful for my day-to-day -day work. Uh, that being said, I think this is actually an exciting project to work on because I'm a relative Go newbie. This is sort of my project to learn Go. Mm -hmm. um, so it's written in, in a way that uh, is tried to be as maintainable for myself. Um, and there's probably a lot of low hanging fruit improvements. Um, the issues sort of capture the roadmap. Uh, I think like an obvious uh, good first issue is just a better logo. I sort of made these two yellow sand dune triangles in Affinity Designer and that's the logo right now. Um, it'd be great to have a better one. Uh, so if any designer or someone who can make logos would be at all interest, there's a great first issue for you there. Um, and then there's sort of some of the nitty gritty, like these aren't so good as uh, Eli fives, but they're interesting for people who might actually be using the tool. Mm -hmm. um, 
there is this is actually a good first issue as well i'm gonna add good first label right now i was gonna say that one stood out to me because then even even for somebody who's quite new and like maybe they can't do a full pr for it but even just like someone that's like comments on that just saying like here are all the emacs keybinds like that's a good that's a good first step like that's something they can contribute as well without without feeling like they have to take on the full the full load um yeah that's awesome Cool. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, yeah, and probably a good intro to sort of the uh, the code base as well. Um, key bindings are pretty well scoped to their files. I could get into these in more detail, but each of them have a decent description. Other than than these two, it's sort of like diving in a bit more. I'm trying to be super responsive on this project, so if anyone who's interested in contributing uh, sees any of these and has any questions, I'll like probably reply within a day um nice. so just throw up your questions and comments on on whatever issue or make a new one um really excited about this project and then in terms of getting the dev environment set up what is what is the what's the lift on that yeah cool that's sort of where i want to go next so yeah you might ask like okay i'm not using nomad i can't even test this thing um oh that's another thing and i need to add an issue about that there are no tests for this right now. Uh, I use one. it pretty much every day and like pretty much every feature every day, but that's kind of a poor substitute for actual tests. So yeah. if you're someone very familiar with uh, charm tooling, I know there's some uh, whispers and realities of testing framework set up for Bubble Tea. Mm -hmm. um, if you like one and you want to start writing tests for it, I'd be very amenable to someone kicking off uh, some testing patterns for the project. Yeah, but yeah for sure. dev environment. Um, let's talk about it. So uh there's docs all in the readme for installation configuration all that um mm -hmm. and at the bottom there's a short se section on development we can talk about it a bit more in detail um so uh there's some scripts in the scripts directory that are shell scripts uh some of them z, z shell specific um but they should all sort of illustrate um what i what i do when i when i develop on it um mm -hmm. Again, like those more familiar with Go tooling, um, I've never used Delve or something like that. Um, you might find this a bit janky, but it works pretty well for me. I'll show you my setup. Really, there's just a few things. There's scripts, uh, running Wanda runs the build app. Uh, and then it, usually you want to, when you're doing development, set this environment variable to true, uh, which will set all your uh, debug calls to the um, to append to the log file. Okay. Um, and I can sort of drop in here. Uh, there's also um, sort of the trying it out section is important. This is how to run a Nomad cluster locally, which Nomad actually makes pretty easy um, mm -hmm. and submit jobs to it so that you can run Wander against your own machine. Yeah, so so here's sort of my TMUX setup for when I uh, when I do some development on Wander. I have uh, four panes, my main editor for like git commands uh, and actually running Wander. Um, this logs uh, pane, which really just tails the logs file that's created um when the environment variable is true uh this dev script which um runs a tool called enter which is just a file watcher um i have it watch all go files and every save i make it rebuilds wander yeah um and then this is running an actual uh local nomad um cluster so this is uh the scripts nomad local and it's the sort of trying it out section of the readme so I'll keep this running uh, in this pane, and we will, won't look at these too much right now. But if I run Wander right now with this thing true, um, we'll see, hey, there's no jobs. Is the cluster empty or no Nomad token provided? Uh, and then you can just quit. You can't really do anything from here. That's because I have Nomad running, but I haven't submitted any jobs. And I'm not sure this is in the readme yet. I should add it. If not, it's not in there. But I have a script that I use uh, and that you could probably use as well, this generate script. Mm -hmm. um, and all it does is submit four jobs to Nomad. Does it, th these ones you'll see in the readme, the vanilla ice lyrics, um, you'll see those. And now when we run Wander, um, we'll see those four jobs that have been running since I ran it 10 seconds ago. Nice. So this is a nice way you run Nomad locally and you run that submit script and you now have some jobs to work with and interact with mm -hmm. as you're testing your changes. So, uh, yeah, just to like quickly demo it, you step through to the allocations, here are the logs, standard error logs, see the specs, exec in and run commands. 
yeah, and that's sort of like what was already shown in the readme. What's important uh, to know when you're deving is uh, when you tail the log file, you'll see these messages come through. Mm -hmm. And that's something I set up that I like having in the app. There's sort of like nested bubble tea components. Yeah. And at the top of each one, it prints the component. So the main components, like the app component, I guess, mm -hmm. um, it's actually running. And then the type of message it was received that was received. So you can see sort of uh, message types going from main through down to their subcomponents. Yeah, um, that can be super helpful when you're especially like debugging, making sure that it's actually like you're actually calling the right updates and stuff like that. That's a, that's a great strategy. Nice. Yeah, I find it great. Um, and this is updating because I have this sort of polling set up right now um, mm -hmm. that's enabled. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, if we edit something, we'll see this rebuild. So let's like cause it to fail. Oh, commands is failed and fix it and it rebuilds. Um, so that's that. Uh, the script here is um, scripts dev dot shell, and then if you have enter and installed, it'll it'll do it for you. Nice. Um, and yeah, that's sort of my setup when I when I develop on Wander. Again, like testing super welcome. Other uh, suggestions for debugging and setup is very welcome. Um, and yeah, any ideas you have if you're a Nomad power user, and you, I really use it for the things I use about Nomad, but there's a lot mm -hmm. more features in Nomad that I would be excited about um, seeing people incorporate. Uh, so yeah, I talked to some folks at HashiCorp, they're excited about it. Uh, someone named Charlie has already made a couple cool feature requests for like Nomad 1.4, the latest version, awesome. um, stuff like that. So yeah, tons of cool stuff to be done with it. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, that sounds super great. And curious, so I noticed you're on. I noticed you're on Mac. Is this meant to be um, kind of like OS agnostic, able to run on all different operating systems? Yeah, good question. So yeah, uh, Neil Mantra Evan, um, pretty early in the project, was like, "Hey, we should get you set up on Go Releaser. Uh, Go Releaser is awesome. Uh, I think also built by a Carlos. Charm employee. Yeah, yeah, Carlos. Yeah, Carlos is awesome." Um, yeah, and Evan helped me set up uh, the sort of Go release your spec. So it does build against um, multiple targets, uh, both kinds of Macs, um, Windows, Linux. Perfect. So uh, yeah, and then and then there's like a automatic release to a, um, a brew tap I have set up in a different repository. So you can brew install it on right. um, whatever brew supported platforms. Yeah, that's awesome. And then of course, People are always welcome to when they run it and they find any bugs, <laughs> report those as issues, another great way to contribute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can sort of demo what will happen. Like if we kill the Nomad cluster um, and then run Wander, it's like, oh, something broke. Um, and any error, you'll see this, if this seems wrong, consider opening an issue here. Nice. Um, and please do click that if you use it and see something and, and report your issue. Before we end off, are there any other projects that you're working on that you want to give like a quick little shout out to that people might, who if they're looking to contribute to things, it doesn't have to be Go even, um, but just a little shout out to anything else that you're that you're working on right now? Not at the moment. Um, Wander has been my focus for the last few months. So yeah, not really. Okay. All in on Wander. Cool. I always like to give that little opportunity because sometimes there's like maybe a favorite project or something that that you're using or that you're contributing to that is also worth a feature, even if you're not using Charm stuff on that one, you know? For sure. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. That was a great demo. I'm very impressed by how prepared you were for that. Uh, so yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.